Hello and welcome to a tutorial on how to create a standard operating procedure. My name is Paul Dean and I'm a continuous improvement practitioner with over 25 years of experience. I've been creating standard operating procedures or work instructions for quite a number of years and drawing on my years of experience I'm going to share with you today a practical insight into creating standard operating procedures with the intention that after this tutorial you'll be able to go off and write your own with relative ease. So let's get started. Firstly, there's a few valuable resources that I've created that will help you understand the broader context of standard operating procedures. But in this tutorial, I'm going to be very specific to help you create your own procedures. The standard operating procedure is best as an outcome from a process map, just like this one shown here. Now a process map or flowchart is a set of steps drawn in a diagram with connectors from step to step as shown here. When we write a standard operating procedure we're using the steps from the process map in the correct sequence. If we don't have a process map we can still create the document but I've found it's much easier otherwise we might miss a valuable step or maybe the correct sequence. So what is the standard operating procedure? By definition, it's a set of instructions laid out step by step to help us complete complex processes. In other words, it helps to instruct us in business processes that contain multiple steps by putting it all in a single document. The format has concise bullet points and pictures, which I'll go through shortly. It minimizes variation and thus improving our business. It can be used as a reference point to improve communication it should be easily accessible, available at the workstation. It can play a significant part in training and skills. And by using a controlled version component, we're assured that we're using the correct version. Now, as mentioned in a previous tutorial, I'd highly recommend we apply a strength test to ensure everyone else can fully understand the document. We build it in collaboration with a team who are doing the process every day. Finally, let us plan to review the document periodically and not just set and forget. So let's get into the detail of a typical standard operating procedure with my recommendation of components. This example has been prepared in Microsoft Word. It's the simplest method to writing instructions. The first is a header. This is where we place our company logo the title of the document and the version number. In this case, the version number is P001.1 and the title is the safe operation of Dewalt 4157 angle grinder. Now this content sounds pretty much like a safety document, but the procedure can be anything at all. I've just chosen this example since it's easy to understand. The second part is the footer. This is where we list the document and title, the owner of the document or the approver, and the document date. It's also important down here to show the page number and the total pages. The first column is the procedure overview. This is where the document categories are highlighted so we can navigate the sections of the document easy. And it also serves as a document margin where we can place specific warning symbols to help us focus on specific tasks and the related concerns. The second column is entitled Instructions and Explanations. And this is where the bulk of the instructions are placed. Now the first row of the procedure is always used for PPE. What is the safety equipment required for this procedure? For simplification, I find it's best to use symbols as the PPE required, shown here. Also in this section, we want to make reference to any other procedures that are relevant. In this case, there are references to overarching safety procedures. The next row, we have a place for equipment, if necessary, to be used in this particular procedure. This ensures that we have all the PPE and now all the equipment ready to undertake the procedure. Now, the third row is set aside for any pre-operating steps or checks. Since we haven't started the task yet, this is the way to set up any pre-start checks to ensure we're ready for the procedure. Then comes the bulk of the procedure or the bulk of the instructions. Note here they're simple and clear, concise points numbered according to the steps. 
I highly recommend keeping this information to one or two sentences as the photo will tell most of the story. Now regarding the photos, they've got to be clear and easy to understand. Check that the process step is correctly communicated by the photo and the bullet point to help explain the photo. Most people reading the process step will go straight to the photo. So please focus your attention on getting the right photo to tell the story. Ensure the photo is of excellent quality and resolution. Also in this section, we can use symbols to highlight any important safety aspects as shown here. Finally, the standard operating procedure should be readily displayed at the workstation for easy reference. I highly recommend displaying it in such a way that respects the document, that is, keeping it in a folder or laminating it to protect it. A loose document will get damaged and even may go missing. That's why we have document control and document page numbers. But having some sort of folder or binder will certainly protect your investment. So that brings us to the end of this brief tutorial on how to create a standard operating procedure. So what's next? To get the best out of this tutorial, I suggest taking the template in this video, making yourself a version in Microsoft Word, then getting a few people together and either transcribing the steps from a process map or writing down the steps in the process. Take photos that represent the bullet points. Put all the ingredients together, collaborating with your team, and determine the control aspects of the document, numbering, owner, accept, and then repeat. So I trust that you've enjoyed this brief tutorial. Please check out these other videos that will support you in creating standard operating procedures. Thanks for watching.